Hello, pup parents, and welcome to today's episode of the Perfect Pup Podcast. This one's a little different. We're going to go down a scientific study that I recently heard about and I found extremely fascinating. And I think it's gonna, it gives good insight into how our dogs interact with us and how we can approach our relationship with our dogs. So let's get right into it. So this study, uh, I originally saw it on a Netflix series called Explained, um, and it's a a small section in an episode they did about dogs, um, where they kind of try to explain dogs from a more scientific standpoint, which again, I think is valuable to us as pup parents to try and understand even the basics of of how our dogs interact with us and the world scientifically. Um, You know, you don't need to go study all the textbooks, but there's, it's always good to learn more um, about these types of things. So what these researchers were trying to figure out is they were trying to understand how you've probably heard that our dogs can pick up on our, on our like smells and, and how we're feeling and our emotions and a group of scientists, they wanted to put that to the test and they wanted to see even more specifically, um, how our dogs respond to what are called chemo signals, which is basically just the chemical signals that your body puts out at any given time. So what they did is this, they had um, a group of some participants, humans, watch videos that were either um, one supposed to induce feelings of happiness and joy. I believe it was uh, the Jungle Book that they had them watch a section from the Jungle Book. And then the other one, Um, was a scary scene from The Shining, and it was supposed to induce fear, stress, anxiety, those types of things. And as they had the subjects watch these videos, they took a sweat sample from the people, and they basically put that into a container that could be used for the next part of the experiment. So again, sweat from people who are happy or experiencing a joyful thing in front of them, and sweat from people who are scared fearful, anxious. And what they did next is they had, they took the sweat sample and they, you know, randomized it, all those good things that you do in scientific trials. And they put the sweat in the middle of the room and there were, and then there were two other people in the room. There was the pup parent of that specific dog and a stranger. And if I remember correctly, they had a stranger kind of sitting on one side and the pup parent standing on another side and both weren't really trying to get the dog's attention or anything. It was just, they were kind of standing still, not showing any motion, just trying to be kind of stonewall, I guess. Uh, So what they did is they placed the scent um, of that actual, or, you know, I think, I believe it was an actual sample of the sweat into the middle of the room. They would release the dog and they also had them hooked up to um, heart rate monitors to, to really get a sense of, you know, not just what they were doing physically, but how their body how the dog's body was reacting um, to these chemical smells um, from the sweat. And what they found is that the when the dogs were presented with the sweat that was from fear, someone who had was anxious or fearful, what, what you saw was, and what they saw very consistently, was less interaction with the stranger and more interaction with the pup parent, especially, you know, kind of, being fearful and trying to go towards their pup parent where they could receive some comfort. So, you know, imagine the dog walks up, they kind of get a sniff of, of those chemicals that are in that, I don't know, let's just say dish or whatnot. And when it was the anxiety or fear smell or chemical that had come from the human participants, the dogs were more likely to have elevated heart rates and to show signs of anxiety, which included you know, trying to get closer to their pup parent. In some of the clips, they're even, you know, running to hide behind their pup parent. Whereas on the opposite side, when the chemical dish, again, I'll just say dish in the middle, um, was the sweat from someone who was happy or was in a good mood, they'd watched a fun clip. The dog showed a higher level of interacting with that stranger that was in the room. And it really is, you know, it's kind of a simple thing that a lot of us have, um, oh, one, one thing as well, I, I believe I mentioned this, but just to, to kind of reiterate, it wasn't just what the dogs were doing, you know, so they were looking to see who they would interact with, what, where they were kind of 
putting their gaze, if they were looking at the stranger, if they were looking at their pet parent, but also specifically what their heart rate was doing, what the dog's heart rate was doing. And the heart rate data in the control and happy conditions were significantly lower than in the fear condition. So this is scientific evidence, scientific proof that our dogs pick up on the chemicals within our body. They pick up on our emotions and our feelings and our senses, even if we don't think we are displaying them. Even if, you know, so you imagine you're walking down the street. So I'm going I'm to use a personal example that really kind of hit made this hit home. And, 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 you know, I had seen this kind of scientific experiment in real life. So my wife and I, we live in New York city and there are often situations in New York city where you can feel scared or stressed, or there are people that stress you out or situations where you feel like you might be in danger. And my wife always says that she really believes that, you know, our dogs are really good at picking up on that. And and being able to know, you know, if she when she's nervous, especially our dog Scout, our Scout, our dog Scout will get very kind of. She'll kind of start looking around more often. She'll be checking up on my wife more frequently. She'll be, you know, exhibiting those signs of of you know she knows something is up. She knows that there is some fear or anxiety present. And this study shows that those types of hunches that we have as pup parents are true and they are real, and that our dogs do pick up on our chemical signals that we give out. So it's a fascinating study. There'll be a link to it in you know the description of this episode, but the kind of one thing that I want to, uh, hopefully you think about or you kind of pull from this little experiment and what the scientists discovered is that our dogs, number one, they're more in tune with us than we probably think they are. You know, there's a reason that dogs are therapy animals and there's a reason that dogs can help people who have strokes or, you know, who have panic attacks and they can sense it often before the human even does because they're picking up on these chemical balances. They're, they're picking up on the things that are happening in our bodies that we may not even notice yet. So that's just an amazing thing. But number two, on a personal level between you and your dog, there's a, a, a lot you've probably heard me talk about how it's important to kind of exude calmness as much as we can, especially when we're training. So I use this example a lot because I think it's so pertinent and a challenge for a lot of people, myself included, is, you know, when you come home and and if you are just like extremely overly excited and you're, you, you get yourself hyped up, our dogs read on that as this study shows, and they're going to get more hyped up, which can be a good thing. You know, you love each other, you want to see each other, but at the same time, you know, as much as we can to to keep our own demeanor and our own like feelings and emotions as calm as possible when we come home to our dogs, it can help them mirror that. So again, you've probably heard, oh, you know, our dogs mirror how we're feeling. Our dogs mirror, you know, what what we're feeling. This study shows that there is scientific truth behind that. So just something fun to think about. I think it's always good to learn about, you know, what scientists are finding out about dogs, especially as, as technology improves and, and we can do things like hook up heart rate monitors to our dogs and, and see how they're acting and when presented with certain uh, chemo signals and, and how they're feeling and those types of things. So I hope you found this interesting. Uh, I'll link to kind of the uh, publication article uh, so you can go check it out and, and, and kind of read, read it for your own to get a better understanding of it. But again, our dogs, they sense even just with our smells and with the chemicals that we um, not even knowingly put out, they can they can sense how we're feeling and they will often mirror that and they will start to feel those emotions as well. Fascinating. Our dogs are fascinating animals and I think it's just so amazing that we have the opportunity to live with them and just be a part of their world and they're a part of our world. So I hope you found this episode interesting. I know it wasn't quite training tips or something like that, but I think it's good to mix it up have some fun stuff like this. Uh, if you haven't already, please leave a review, especially on Apple Podcasts. It is super, super helpful. Or if you're watching on YouTube, please leave me a comment as to what you thought about this episode. Uh, but other than that, then we will catch you on the next episode.